Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. This is my sign name and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life and welcome. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks and I am the deacon and I am happy that you are able to join us for worship today. Hello, and my name is Wendy DeVore and I'm the interpreter for today. Today is Sunday, March 7th. This is our third Sunday of Lent. Our focus today will be on the concept of breaking the chains of despair that drowned out hope and joy. When these chains are broken, we celebrate that there is hope that God will not forget anyone. God will not miss one. And now please light a candle at home as we enter into worship today. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. And please follow along. Return, return to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you. Prayer of the day. God, you are the rejoicing Father. You celebrate when one of your lost children is found because no one is worthless to you. We stand humbled and in awe that you would count us among your most prized possessions. Give us openness to understand the priceless value of every living soul. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, he became human for the sake of our souls. Amen. And now a reading from Psalms 
119 verses 167 through 176. I follow your rules. I love them very much. I obey all your instructions and rules because you know everything I do. Lord, listen to my cry for help. Make me wise as you promised. Listen to my prayer. Save me as you promised. I will burst into song of praise because you have taught me your laws. Let my voice sing about your word because all your commands are good. I have chosen to follow your instructions, so reach out and help me. Lord, I want you to save me. Your teachings make me happy. Let me live to praise you. Let me find the help I need in your laws. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. I am your servant. And I have not forgotten your commands. Here ends the reading. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 32. Many tax collectors and sinners came to listen to Jesus. Then the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to complain. Look, this man welcomes sinners and even eats with them. Then Jesus told them this story. Suppose one of you has 100 sheep, but one of them gets lost. What will you do? You will leave the other 99 sheep there in the field and go out and look for the lost sheep. You will continue to search for it until you find it. And when you find it, you will be very happy. You will carry it to your home, go to your friends and neighbors and say to them, be happy with me because I have found my lost sheep. And now for another parable. Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins, but she loses one of them. She will take a light and clean the house. She will look carefully for the coin until she finds it. And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say to them, be happy with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In the same way, it is, happy, it is a happy time for the angels of God when one sinner decides to change. And now for the third parable. Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me now the part of your property that I am supposed to receive someday. So the father divided his wealth between his two sons. A few days later, the younger son gathered up all he had left. He traveled far away to another country, and there he wasted his money living like a fool. After he spent everything he had, there was a terrible famine throughout the country. He was hungry and needed money, so he went and got a job with one of the people who lived there. The man sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything.
The son realized that he had been very foolish. He thought, all of my father's hired workers have plenty of food, but here I am almost dead because I have nothing to eat. So I will leave and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like the one of your hired workers. So he left and went to his father. While his son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming and felt sorry for him. So he ran and hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him and also a ring on his finger and good sandals on his feet and bring our best calf and kill it so that we can celebrate with plenty to eat. My son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but now is found. So they began to have a party. The older son had been out in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the sounds of music and dancing. So he called to one of the servant boys and asked, what does all this mean? The boy said, your brother has come back and your father killed the best calf to eat. He is happy because his son is back safe and sound. The older son was angry and would not go into the party. So his father went out and begged him to come in. But he said to his father, look, for all these years, I have worked like a slave for you. I have always done what you told me to do. And you never even gave me a young goat for a party with my friends. But then this son of yours comes home after wasting your money and kill the best calf for and then kill the best calf for him. And his father said to him, Oh, my son, you are always with me. And everything I have is yours. But this was a day to be happy and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now is found. Here ends the gospel reading. My friends, grace and peace to you from our God. Our God is the one who celebrates with us, who celebrates for us every single time we turn back to God. All right, well, it is not very often that we read all three of these stories at the same time. Usually we split it up into two or three um, different times of reading the stories. And when we do that, I think we miss the point. The very beginning of today's lesson where Jesus is visiting with the sinners and the people who are outcast. The Bible lesson says that Pharisees and scholars and teachers of the law 
are watching Jesus and they're judging Jesus for the conversation that he's having with those people. That judgment and jealousy that we see at the beginning of this lesson show us that the religious leaders and the religious insiders miss the joy and the celebration that comes when someone realizes that they are beloved. And so my point for today is a question. How often do we miss celebrating? How often do we fail to rejoice when someone realizes God loves them? I really, I wonder how often do we ignore people who uh, behave differently than we do? And how often do we expect that when people come into our church, they already know how to love and trust someone? And I really wonder what the, would it look like for us as a church to just throw open our doors and to say, come, 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 we love you just as you are. We love you. And we don't say there are rules. We don't, we, we start with, we love you instead of starting with the rules. So I just want to imagine a little bit as we go through these parables today, what perhaps what they might teach us. So in the first parable, the shepherd goes out into the wilderness to find that one lost sheep. And I really like how Dorothy signed that part of the story with the shepherd searching high and low and frantically searching, searching, searching until that one sheep is found. And even though the shepherd made a big mistake in his job, right? Because a shepherd's job is just what? It's to keep track of the sheep. So the shepherd made a huge mistake, but he didn't hide it. He didn't hide the mistake. Instead, when he found the sheep finally, he invited everyone to come and celebrate because the sheep was found. So instead of pretending like nothing happened, he said, yes, I messed up and now it's time to party. And I wonder what it would feel like for us to celebrate even when we have made mistakes. To celebrate that we searched and searched, that we tried a new thing and it didn't work, that we made a mistake. And so we kept trying again and again. does it look like if we decide to have a big party when that happens? That something good comes from all of our searching. In, um, just this week, so I'm going to add a specific example. I hadn't thought of it before right now, but just this week, uh, we had all kinds of problems getting our Wednesday night worship service recorded. And 
on Wednesday, I had to send an email and say that that worship service wouldn't be available with the sign language because of all the problems. And as I'm sitting here, I'm wondering, I wonder if we could have a little party to celebrate that finally we got it figured out. <laughs> that we finally, that we kept working at it and we got it figured out so that we can share the good news, that we can share Pastor Brenda's message about her life experience. I wonder what that party looks like. Because I know for me, having to send that email and say, I'm really sorry, it was very disappointing. It, it hurts. It hurts when things are so disappointing. And so what does it look like for us to celebrate that that worship service is available now? A small example, but I wonder, I wonder what that looks like. Okay, so we'll go to the next parable. Just thinking about this. In the second parable from today's gospel lesson, the woman is looking and looking and looking for one lost coin. She takes responsibility and she says, I lost it. The woman doesn't blame anyone else, doesn't hide that she lost the coin. That she keeps searching until she finally finds it. And then for like the value of one day's work, that's how much that coin is worth, like what you might get paid for one day of work. She throws a huge party. She invites the whole neighborhood and says, come over, I found one coin. Now, I don't know exactly what us looking for one coin looks like, but I wonder if it might be something like really looking at our own actions or maybe it's the things that we don't do. How does that push others away? What if we search and search and look over the things that we do Asking ourselves, does this keep other people away from us? Are we ignoring someone's need? Or are we assuming that everyone who joins us needs to behave the same way we do? don't know but I wonder what if we decide to look and think about how what we do as a community and then we say ah we found something we found something that keeps people away and we're not going to do it and then we're going to have a party to celebrate we're putting away that bad habit So, okay, then the third parable today, it's the most popular of these three stories. And often when we read it separately from these, uh, the lost sheep and the lost coin, we miss out that Jesus is teaching the Pharisees and the um, scholars and the lawyers we miss the point that Jesus is trying to make. Because if you remember, at the very beginning of this gospel lesson, Jesus is sitting with sinners and tax collectors, with people who are pushed out of the religious community. And those religious leaders are judging Jesus for those conversations. 
And Jesus says, hold on, you, you are missing the celebration. You are missing the joy. I want you to see how you're missing that joy. So Jesus tells these stories. And at the end of the story of the father with the two sons, we find the older son standing outside the party. The father says, come in, come in. Your brother was dead and is alive. Your brother was lost and now he's found. Jesus is asking the religious leaders if they will join the celebration. Will you come to the party? Because people who were dead are coming to life now. People who were lost from God's love, they find themselves sitting at God's feet. Will you join the celebration? And Jesus is asking this to us as well. Jesus says, will you join the celebration when one lost person realizes that God loves you? Will you rejoice when someone comes into your midst? Will you just love that person? Even though they don't behave like you, will you just love them? I think in church, we often get it wrong. We really, really want people to come into our church already knowing that God loves them. Already knowing that that love changes their lives. It changes how they treat one another, how they treat other people, how they treat themselves. I think often in our churches, we want to be more like college where you're getting ready to work rather than being like preschool or kindergarten, being the place where people come to learn how to learn. I think about preschool and about kindergarten and, and the teachers I've gotten to know with my kids going to those kinds of programs. Those are places where kids love that the teachers just cherish those children. They shower them with love. They don't let them hit each other. They don't let them fight each other, but they aren't mean about it. They care for those little kids. I think in church, a lot of times we really want to be more like a college classroom or high school classroom where there's a lot of order. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. And it starts to feel like a place where we judge one another, we criticize one another. So I don't have any answers, but I really want to wonder together, what does it look like if we decide to do something different? What if we say and do something like this? No matter who comes in, no matter what they look like or how they smell or what their behavior is, we say you are loved. 
Come sit by me. Come have a cup of coffee. Let's chat. Now, I know we're not going into our church building right now. So it's sort of an imaginary practice. But we do have to practice saying hello to a stranger. I wonder what it would look like for us as a community if we decide to go out, not to wait for people to come to us, but to go out, to meet a new person, to go out and just say, you know what, in my church, this is how I feel. I feel accepted. I feel celebrated. I feel whole. What if we go out, each one of us goes out and invites a new friend or a stranger to come into our beautiful church? And I wonder what it looks like if we decide to let go of our old grudges and all of the ways that we feel like the older brother or the Pharisees in this story. You know, those times when we feel like, wait a minute, I've been here, I've been working the whole time. And now you're throwing a party for someone else. What if we decide to let go of that and just say, hey, you're here, let's party, let's celebrate. Because this is what Jesus is getting at. Our attitude can change. We can celebrate every day because everything God promises is already ours. We already have all of the joy, all of the life, all of the gifts, all of the promises. Those things are already ours. And at the end of the story, the uh, father and son's story in today's lesson, father says to the older son, you have been with me always always and everything i have it's already yours you already have it you didn't need to wait to celebrate so my friends we we don't need to wait to celebrate because god is already here with us right now So the question is, how will you join in God's party this week? How will you rejoice today? How will you trust everything God has is yours? It's already yours. Amen.
Prayers of the People. Let us pray for all people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention toward others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now sharing God's peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And please share a sign of God's peace with one another. And you could do this by texting someone or sending them an email or calling them on the video phone. So please, please share the peace with one another. Dorothy, peace be with you. And peace be with you. All right. Uh, we are to the point of our worship service where we um, talk about the candles that are in the picture with Dorothy. And also, we've been talking about the paper chains that are showing here in my office. So I hope uh, that you at home continue to add links to your paper chains and are reading and reflecting on the ideas that um, are included in those papers. I know one of the ideas this week was to um, help do a chore around the house or maybe it'll be around at your apartment building or something like that. If you don't live in a house or you don't have other people that you live with, just do a chore for someone that they don't ask you to do. To break the chains of um, like, responsibility and duty falling to just one person. And at my house, my kids said, mom, you shouldn't do that because you always do extra chores for people. Because it's always true, but that's what they said. So each week of Lent, we do put out a candle that is showing in Dorothy's screen. As we get closer to Holy Week and to Easter, it feels like there is more that we have lost than the good things that we found. Because as we go through Lent, we get closer and closer to the time when Jesus is betrayed. We get closer and closer to his suffering and his death. And on this 
third Sunday of Lent this year, we acknowledge that there are times when our despair drowns out hope and joy. We forget God's promise of hope, that promise that not one person, not one sheep, not one coin will be lost. We admit that we, we fail to celebrate those times when the lost ones are found. So we pray that God will break the chains of despair that hold us. So as we extinguish the light, the candle, we acknowledge our mistakes and our sins, and we confess that we are distracted at times from following God. That we ignore or even hurt our neighbors. That we need God's hope. We ask God for the faith to rejoice everything. As Dorothy puts out a candle, I'm going to add our, a link to my chain. Let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen. Our friends, my friends, uh, as we return our gaze and our attention to the Lord during Lent, we are invited to put our faith into action. And part of an active faith is generous giving. And so at this point in our worship, we want to share with you the opportunity to give generously. When you give your money, some of your money, to the work of this church, it helps us continue our mission to share the good news that God loves deaf people and their families, and that here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and their families too. And so with God, we share the good news. God loves you. So we ask that you give generously to this work. You can send a check to Bread of Life, and we do check our mailbox frequently during the week. Or you can use an online giving option, and some of the things that we have set up are available on our website. And so. I'll put that information at the bottom of the screen. So we invite you to give at this time. Let us pray. Let us give God's our gift. Let us give God our gifts and pray. 
Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embrace all your children. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will not be voiced. Receive the blessing before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. And please follow along. Thanks be to God. Amen.